everyone. Welcome back to Hi-Fi Home Theater. I'm your host, Brian. Thanks for stopping by. Well, it's 2023, and I thought it'd be fun to kick off the year with a tour of my setup. Uh, if you're anything like me, you love watching video tours on YouTube, so I figured I've never done one for my own setup, and I finally have it finished. So I thought, hey, let's do one to, for the first video of the year. But before we get into that, uh, I wanted to say thank you for everybody that watches my videos. The view count is going way up. But I've noticed that over 95% of, of my viewership isn't subscribed. So if you think I've earned your subscription, please do me a favor and hit the subscribe button down below. Uh, also, if you want to be notified when I do drop content, hit the notification bell as well. Just to get some room specs out of the way, this is a basement setup. The dimensions are about 36 feet wide by 19 feet deep and about eight and a half feet high. My speaker arrangement is a 7.1.4 setup. So I have seven bed layer channels, four Atmos channels, and on the dot one, I actually have two subwoofers. For the room layout planning, I did reach out to Steven Smith over at Home Theater Gurus, who uh, supplied me with exactly where to position all my speakers and what acoustic panels to purchase or build myself and exactly where to push put them and coach me through the entire process. I'll say to this day, best money I've ever spent in this hobby, bar none. So as we walk through here, I'm gonna just go one by one through uh, the different pieces of equipment that I have in the room. And I may or may not have done a video review on some of these this equipment. If I have, you'll find them in my videos and I'll put a card up top with a link to them. If you see something in here that you're interested in, in a video on, uh, just let me know down in the comments. All right, guys, let's start out with my surround speakers. This is the Arndal 1723 Surround STHX. It's a long name, but uh, I've got four of these, two on the back wall and two on the side columns. Uh, you can see that they are a match to my mains. They've got that nice uh, soft dome tweeter in that aluminum wave guy with a six and a half inch woofer. These are actually what you, I guess, uh, Arndall calls a triaxle design. So what you've got here is a monopole in the front. And then on the sides here, you've got these other drivers on there. And when the jumper in the back is connected, those drivers play 200 hertz and up. So you've got the monopole playing full range or whatever you're sending to it. And then in addition, you've got those side drivers playing 200 hertz and up. Uh, personally, just because of the way I have it set up here, I have that disconnected. So these are all in monopole mode. But again, those are my surround speakers. I've got four of them. I uh, really enjoy them. I'm a fan of large surround speakers. I just, I just enjoy them better than the small, tiny satellite style speakers. So these work out really well. Uh, they've got a nice wall mount on them and they sit nice and flush to the, well, not flush, but they conform to the wall really nice and, and look good and sound great. Subwoofers, we are using the Monoprice Monolith 13 THX Ultra, I think they're called. Uh, these things weigh about 153 pounds a piece. I do plan on doing a review on them. Really, really happy with these subwoofers. They are big, they are powerful, they are super clean sounding, so they shake the heck out of this room that's over 6,000 cubic feet. Uh, so very, very happy with these subwoofers. Say it's a 13 inch, but it's more like a 15 inch basket in there. 2000 watt amp, great subwoofer, great price, very happy with it. Look for a review in the future. Right next to my right subwoofer is one of my main speakers, the Arndal 1723 THX-S Tower. Uh, I have a review on this, so if you haven't seen that, check it out. Love this speaker as well. It's just a jack of all trades. It's amazing for movies, takes tons of power, has great dynamics. But at the same time, it sounds great for music too. It's a MTM design, which I, I have grown to really like and appreciate very heavy and sturdy i mean you can't push these things over which was kind of one of the things i was looking for when i was building this basement i didn't want my kids to be able to knock stuff over very well so that helped fit the bill they're about 70 pounds a piece and they have the outriggers on them so very sturdy great speakers 
If you haven't seen the review, please check it out. Moving on to the center channel, this is the Arndahl uh, 1723 Center STHX. Matches with the left and right towers and actually all the surrounds. Uh, this center works great for me. I mean, it, it sounds exactly like the towers. Uh, takes a ton of power as well. Dialogue is excellent. I'm about 11 feet away and I don't have any uh, off access issues with lobing or anything. It still sounds great for my other seats. So very happy with that center channel. For a display, I am using the 85 inch Sony uh, XBR 950G. This is a 4K TV. It is not calibrated yet, but uh, it's got great out of the box settings and color. I just, uh, I think I turned off some of the smoothing and some of the things that made that for uh, soap opera effect or whatnot, but really I've done very minimal setting adjustments to the television and I think the picture looks great, but I still would like to get it uh, professionally calibrated in the future. Uh, I might eventually get a drop down projector screen to add to here, but for now this TV works for our use down here uh, perfectly. All right, here tucked away next to the stairs is my equipment rack. This is a Sanus rack. I'm not exactly sure of the model number, uh, but I bought this as an all-in-one. It had, it's got wheels on it to roll it, but it also has feet to plant it down. The door came with it. All the shelves came with it, except for the heavyweight shelf holding my amplifier up. But other than that, all the shelves and panels came for it, came, or I'm sorry, came with it. Really happy with this rack. This is my first rack and it made uh, made the task a lot easier than sourcing all the parts individually. So let's take a look here. Let's uh, open this up here. Just turn it, open it up. All right, and let's just start from the top here. On the top, we have an audio source. What is that, a uh, 100VS? That is actually a, just a small two channel amp for my patio speakers. Just below that is the Denon X3800H. I have done a review on that. Check that out if you haven't, very happy with that. That's my AVR receiver. Uh, it is only running the four height channels as of right now. Everything else, my all my bed layer channels are run off. Uh, we'll skip the uh, fan there down to the monolith 7X seven channel amplifier. Again, this is running my seven bed layer speakers. Do plan on doing a review on this amplifier too. Uh, love this amplifier. It's, it's great. Does everything I, I want it to do. Tons of power, super clean. No warmth or distortion, which I don't care for. Uh, it's just, just a great all around amplifier. But let's go back in between the amplifier. You'll see I have an infinity, an AC infinity fan. And what that is, that's a, a back exhaust fan so what i'm doing is what i want to achieve with this is the hot air rising from the amplifier i'm just blowing that out of the way before it gets to the denon avr so it's not like heat soaking the denon so i've got it set to kick on when it's 85 degrees and it's just fan speed one so real just real quiet just blowing the hot air away from the denon and it does a good job of that just below the amplifier you'll see the heavy duty shelf holding it up there uh, underneath that is a power, basically a power strip, uh, power distribution. I believe it has yeah, 15 amp. It's just basically a power strip uh, hooked onto the rack. Makes things nice and neat back there. Then we have our PlayStation 5. This is the digital version. I haven't bought a disc for a video game in at least a decade. So I buy all my stuff digitally anyway. So digital version was the way to go for me. Underneath that, we've got the Xfinity box and remote. Down a little lower, you can see creeping in the back, my Nvidia Shield, uh, Nintendo Switch console, a couple remotes, and you might not be able to see it, but there is a last gen Apple TV 4K. Another power strip in there, and then hiding on the bottom is my Synology NAS that holds all my uh, MKV files. I also do backups on my laptops, and it holds my CD music for Rune streaming. And right next to that is its battery backup.
For Atmos duty, what I have here are actually outdoor speakers. They are the Rebel, I believe it's the X55 or the M55XC speaker. So these are just small outdoor speakers with a five and a quarter inch woofer and aluminum dome tweeter. Uh, what I like about them is one, I had a pair of them already, so I just bought a second pair. And two, they have this kind of ball mounting system. It's got like a rubber ball that goes through the back and then you torque it down and you can see that kind of key uh, keyhole underneath the tweeter there, you stick an Allen wrench in there and you can loosen and tighten that ball mount and you can position them pretty much any way you want to. So that makes, them, makes mounting and, and aiming the speakers really easy. Um, I've been satisfied with these so far, uh, but I would not mind doing a, an upgrade to uh, an Arndall speaker in the future. But so far, these work really well. All right, last but not least are the acoustic treatments in here. Like I said, I reached out to Stephen Smith over at Home Theater Gurus, who uh, set me up with a fantastic, easy to read plan for exactly where to place all my speakers, what panels I needed to get, where they needed to go, uh, coach me with any questions I have. Just an all around um, excellent experience using him. Uh, would recommend everybody reach out to someone. If you don't reach out to Steven, reach out to uh, any, some kind of room uh, acoustic professional, get your room treated. It's the best thing. It's the, probably, it's the best money you're gonna spend on this hobby. So on the back wall here, we've got basically all base traps across the back, okay? Like some of these, like this one on this door actually was called a combination panel. So they've got like a scatter plate uh, right behind this fabric. So there's a little bit of reflecting going on as in addition to the absorption from the base trap. The two in the middle are straight up just base traps. And these are the GIK, I'm sorry, the, I forgot to mention the brand name. These are the GIK Acoustic, uh, the five and a quarter panels, I believe, base trap panels. These are also the GIK uh, combination pan base trap panels with the scatter plate on there. In the corner, I had some DMD fabric left over from my dedicated theater. So I went ahead and I made these panels out of DMD fabric for the corner base traps. And then I just have a uh, couple bats of R19 pink fluffy insulation behind there. So that's in that corner. And the other front corner there, there's another corner base trap, same thing. And these three panels here I actually made, again, using uh, DMD fabric, some OSB board and some Owens Corning 703 insulation material, I believe. And then the front panels, these panels are all just straight up uh, five and a quarter GIK acoustic bass traps. You have three on that side behind the right speaker three on this side behind the left speaker. And then I have this small base trap panel underneath my center channel is more so to the hide the power outlet that's behind it, just for looks basically. And just so you guys get a look at my seating setup here, okay, the struggle is real. These are first world problems obviously, but this is my current seating situation. I got this love seat and I got a chair over there with a uh, sofa table in the back. Um, I haven't made up my mind yet if I want something, I want to go like a big sectional or theater seats. So once I make up my mind with that and the budget gets uh, refilled, you know, then I'll, then that'll be my next upgrade for sure. Uh, again, if you have any comments, recommendations, maybe you've done the love seat, went to the theater seats, or you went to theater seats and back to the love seat, or maybe you wish you went one way or another, let me know down in the comments. I'd appreciate it. The last thing I wanted to go over in the room is the lights so all these what look like recessed lights are actually really thin uh rgb led lights they're about like a half inch tall and what i did was since i got all that that ventilate the vents and everything in there i couldn't just put can lights wherever i wanted to just didn't have the uh the clearance so what i did was i cut half inch plywood and these lights are mounted to the half inch plywood there and they have a little connection box that's up there too but worked out really good and these are all rgb uh, and uh controlled by your your smart system so these are all hooked up to the uh, alexa
So that concludes the tour everybody uh, if you've made it this far i want to thank you for sticking around and again if you haven't yet please hit the subscribe button it helps out a lot again if you saw anything in the video that you'd want to see a review done on or more information about let me know down in the comments or if you have any suggestions uh for my for anything i can kind of tweak or change around or try out in my room that you saw uh also let me know, know down in the comments i want to thank you guys again for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take care.